With advances in environmental and human scanning, combinations can produce incredible scenes much more efficiently. One of these technologies is MetaHumans, which provides a complete framework to create and animate realistic digital humans. Another is 3D version spatting technology, which can convert videos into photorealistic 3D scenes. I will go through how both of these can be combined with Unreal Engine and how you can interchange with various metahumans or scenes that you have scanned. Starting with metahumans by Epic Games, this human framework contains presets based on pre-existing scans of real people and only physically plausible adjustments can be made. This can be configured through real-time facial data as demonstrated here by Epic Games earlier in the year or through the online metahuman creator. If you go to the web URL provided in the description below and log into your Epic Game account, this is important as the metahumans you create in this account can be downloaded directly from the same account into your Unreal scene. And then pick the games engine you'll be working with. From here, you can select one of the presets as a starting point. The interface is very intuitive and easy to use. At the bottom here, you can also check out some of the emotional reactions. And on the left menu, you can pick through any of the features and play around with the presets and watch this update live. Since they are all based on scans of real people, through physical restrictions, it prevents you from creating any character that is too unnatural looking. What is most impressive is that you can scale up the whole body to encompass all the various features and outfits, and also then zoom into details like teeth structure. You can also click and drag on parts of the features manually to adjust and mold them. These are all saved automatically to your Epic Games account, so you can leave at any point when you're happy with what you have. Next, to get a scan scene for the environment, we will be looking at Polycam for Gaussian splatting videos into 3D scenes. I did a previous video on this, links provided below, which goes into more detail how to create these using Luma AI, but the same principles essentially apply here too. So you can upload a video here to process or go to the Featured Gallery, where you could download some amazing examples. The one I'm interested in is the Habitat 67 by Isolabs, which looks like it's been taken from some drone footage in some nice detail. So you just create an album, and then save the file into this. From here, select the scan, go to Export, and you can change the format here to the Unreal Engine and just select SPAT PLY and start the download. We will use the free Luma AI Unreal plugin. So if you navigate over to the Luma AI Notion page, I put the links below in the description, you can scroll to the bottom and download a basic starter project file. Just select the Unreal Engine version that you are currently using. Open this up and you can delete all the contents apart from the post process volume in the player start. You can then add in a sun sky system or any lighting system you want. Just a reminder that if you want to use the sun sky, you will need the sun position calculator plugin for this. And also it's a good idea to change the selection mode to landscape and just generate a simple landscape to give a walkable surface for a meta human. If your scene is too bright, you can go to the post process volume, search exposure. And if you switch to the manual metering mode, under the drop down, you can adjust the exposure accordingly. Next, just drag and drop that downloaded PLY file into the content drawer, and four blueprints will be produced. Select the dynamic blueprint and just drag that into the scene. We'll come in unscaled and very randomly positioned, so it's just a matter of scaling, rotating and transforming it until you're happy with the position. You can always adjust this later on. I will just mention one useful tip for editing these scans. If you select the top Habitat 67 file and make sure Enable Crop Box is checked below here, you can use the first crop box in the folder here to remove all the unwanted areas by just scaling this box. Just to show you quickly, you can also add terrain and unreal asset objects on the marketplace or quicksaw bridge and blend them into the scan in a typical way. I won't go in any detail here, 
but you can get the idea of what you can create. Now with the main scene set up, we want to add our character to the scene to navigate around. First, we can add the standard third person player. We go to the content browser and press the button add imports on the top left there and select add feature or content pack. In the content packs tab, select start our third person template and add to the project. To replace this default robot with a nice meta human, go over to the Quixel bridge and on the left where this profile icon is, if you click, you can see all the standard meta humans. You can actually download and use any of these in the scenes. But also if you go to the second option, you can find your custom made meta human, which you previously constructed and just download this and add. In the content browser, navigate down to meta humans and to your downloaded model. Double click to open up the blueprint. You can already drag and drop this into your scene. However, it will be a lifeless model. So we need to add controls and animations to it. If you don't see the blueprint viewport here, go to the window and select viewport. If you expand and zoom in on the meta human, you will see that the hair has gone. To fix this, go over to the components panel on the left and select LOD sync and change the forced LOD to one. Next, change the class setting up here. Go under the parent class and select BP third person character as the base. To align the two together, under components here, drag the root folder under the mesh. Then select the root folder, go over to transform and reset location and rotation to zero. The characters are still not aligned. So go to use live retargeting under the variables and check this tick box to enable use live retargeting. The final step here is then to select the mesh component, search for visibility and uncheck this as we don't need the default mesh anymore. And importantly, check always tick pose and refresh bones here under advanced options. The character is ready, but we need to update the controls. For this, we can just copy and paste across from the BP third person character. So go back to the content drawer, locate this blueprint, open it up, select all and copy. Then go back to the meta human blueprint and paste this all across. All we need to do is adjust one thing at the top. So over here, we can delete the custom event for input mapping and connect the LOD setup to this pin instead. You just compile it all and go over to edit, project settings, and under maps and modes, make sure the default game mode is set to BP third person and under select game mode, change the default form class to meta human blueprint. So in our case, it would be BP underscore ADA. If you make other meta humans, here you can just switch them out accordingly. Now, if you hit play, we can run around and animate our meta human and interact with our 3D Gaussian splat scan. This is just scratching the surface with what can be done with these scans and meta humans. You can take this a step further to bring in your meta humans to the stream 3D Google tiles and also bring in your scans to this model. So I hope you enjoyed this workflow, found it useful and hope you enjoy trying these tools out for yourself.